Okay. I'm letting the alpaca out again. Come on, girls. Brindle, come here. Go on, girls. Come on. Out of girls. Whee! Brindle, hey, 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 hey! Brindle! Disobedient dog. She's just helping herd them out because we've got temperature dropping and I don't want the alpaca to overheat inside. So, hey, 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 you guys, leave them alone. Inca, Inca just can't help herself. Inca, leave them alone. Beautiful sunny day. The temperature is gonna drop over the next few days. Brindle, leave it. Good girl. And I want the alpaca back in the lean too. Oh look, look at that. A rolling alpaca, the glee of being outside again on fresh grass. So I'm gonna bring the hoggett lambs. Look at this. <laughs> I'm gonna bring the, look at them, such bliss in rolling. Brindle, leave it. <laughs> such bliss being out of the stables. So the main flock who are in the shed and relaxing, I haven't finished dagging, but I can bring them in on other days to dag. So I have to be very careful about how much I do with my neck, my injured neck. And this coming Friday, I have another procedure being done on my neck. So as you can see, she needs her dagging done and she's been done. She needs to be dagged. So there's a good few that need, still need doing. Isn't that right, Ginger? So I am going to, whereas there's others that are done. There's a whole series of ladies there that have been done. Have you been done? No, you're not done. So I'm got, I've done half, but the first lambs aren't appearing until the beginning of March. Oh goodness, she swallowed wrong. Look at her, she's got a lovely, an excellent fascinator. Now you're not to be coughing when your fascinator is on. Very, very posh modern fashion there. Oh. Excuse me. Oh, she thinks she's getting food. Inca, leave her. Brindle, leave her. Inca, Inca, leave her be. She's just looking for more food. Brindle, back here. Come on, come on. Anyway, that bucket is what attracted her. They're all racing down now. And I'm gonna close the gate. So you're going nowhere else. Sorry, the bucket's empty. That was what your breakfast was in. So I'm gonna move the yo flock of yo's back into the field they were have been in. And then I will, um, yeah, so I'm gonna do that and I'll continue dagging. Uh, might bring them in next week or the following week. Oh, look, I need to treat her for scald. She's very sore. So I'll treat her for scald before I, do you see how lame she is? I will treat her for scald. Actually, what I'll do now while she's drinking water is I'll close the gate on her and she can't escape back into the flock. Ha! You guys are in here. You want to get into the shed, don't you? We think there's more food there. Okay, she's been dagged and I missed that uh, she needed to ha be treated for scald. So I'm gonna go get the gear and treat her. And then I'm gonna bring all this flock back out to the field. Because that way, if the deep freeze that is being predicted occurs, they will have the aquifer water and the hose pipes won't um, freeze. They will, this because they're gonna, they'll be drinking lots of water. Whereas with the hoggett flock, 
I will be able to manage their water. Isn't that right? No, there's nothing in there. I promise you. Sorry to disappoint you. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Inca, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. She's pissed off at me, aren't you? Okay, I better go get the stuff for that, treat that yo. As you can see, she's very lame. Now, the reason why I probably didn't see that she was lame when I was doing the dagging was sheep have a tendency to not show they're in pain during a time that is perceived as stressful. So dagging is slightly stressful. So she will walk around as if she has four absolutely perfect feet because it's a predator prey thing. Now all predator animals like us humans have our eyes in front and prey animals have their eyes on the side of their head to so they have a broader scope of a visual scope of who might be attacking them. So under the slight duress, it wasn't very duressal, of getting the dagging when I herded the flock of sheep into this area, uh, she would have said, I'm not lame. So you can see she is lame. So I'm gonna catch her and um, uh, do her feet with uh, cloth and spray. So here she is. You can see I've sprayed, you can see the blue where I've sprayed between her hooves. She's gonna be even more pain at the moment because the drying in between the claws is painful. But I'm gonna let her dry out a little bit. You can see, there you can see that I sprayed in between her claws. So she's painful and it's just scald, it's not foot rot. So foot rot is the really, really nasty one. So it's just because we've been in such wet times. Brindle's out there inspecting the flock of alpaca. Leave them be. Come on, good girl, they're fine. And I put a blue dot, which might not last too long, but that way I can identify her as the one that uh, I treated. So I can see that she becomes sound over the next few days, fingers crossed. It can take 24, 48, or even it can take one, two or three days for her to recover. So here's hopefully within that time frame she'll recover and uh, feel better. Okay, I'm gonna let her back into the shed. Okay, yeah, lame girl. And there's the rest of the flock. And I'll move them in a little while back out to the big oak field.